Welcome to Reality Check. My name is Rachel Mwine and on this channel we care for hearts and minds. Every single week we have conversations around mental health in the areas of marriage, family, family life, parenting, relationships and everything in between. And it's important that your mental well-being is taken care of. And that's why this channel exists. Together with Dr. Evers, who is the founder of International Center for Mental Health and Family Care, and who is also a trained therapist and a relationship coach, a life coach as well, we come to you with conversations um, that we believe provide information so that your mental well-being is taken care of. So this week, we are going to be talking about marrying or choosing to marry for the wrong reasons yeah did you know <laughs> that you can decide to marry for the wrong reasons and with the wrong foundation so welcome aboard um, if you're new here please do consider subscribing to our channel like and comment um, just underneath our, our conversations we'd love to hear from you your feedback is very important to us if you are a regular welcome back Welcome, Dr. Evers. Thank you so much, Rachel. You look amazing. I know I say this all the time, <laughs> but I feel like today you're extra, extra. Really? <laughs> yes. Thank you. The colors are just they're coming together beautifully. Trying to spice up the heart. Trying. <laughs> I know, I know. So um, we talk about marriage on this channel a lot um, for good reason, because in our era today, marriage is, like some people like to say, is under attack. Um, for some people, they've been married 5, 10, 15 years and they realize, oh, we have trouble. And so they're trying to figure out ways to live together in harmony. For others, like we're talking today, it's, they have set the, right, the wrong foundation. Mm. They have decided to be married to person X or person Y for the wrong reasons. And so I felt like, we felt like it was important for us to have this discussion. So for the benefit of our audience, and to just set the tone for our chat today, can you describe what marriage is mm. and what we have made it out to be today? Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so marriage um, is a partnership mm -hmm. and a foundation for family. Now, you've heard me talk about um, a family having four subsystems. <clears throat> So we have four subsystems. The first one is the spousal. Mm -hmm. Spousal subsystem is the marriage. Yeah. Because there's no family without, without yeah. people, two people getting together. Now, I know that's controversial because people say, what do you mean there's mm. family, different things. Mm -hmm. But uh, family, when it is getting together, there are two people that have come together in a union. Mm. So that union is what we call the spousal relationship. And so this, because it is the foundation of a family, it's very important. So a, a family cannot stand when you say family is under attack. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to have strong families without strong marriages. Mm -hmm. So that's the spousal subsystem. In science and, and in relational science and psychology, again, they put the success of a family 80% is from the spousal spouse. relationship. Mm -hmm. So that is foundational. But underneath the marriage, there is a foundation as well. Mm -hmm. So let me just first finish the subsystem. So there's spousal, there is parenting. Mm -hmm. Turns out that if your marriage is not good, it's very hard to be great parents, parents. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because you need to be together to parent children. Mm -hmm. A whole conversation on that which I will not get into now. Mm. So that parental subsystem is dependent on the on yes. the quality of the marriage. Yes. Right? You've seen parents fight through their children because they are fighting as parents, mm. as, as individuals, as a couple. So the parental subsystem cannot work together mm. or work well effectively when the marriage is not doing well. Then we have the sibling subsystem. Mm. The sibling subsystem also depends on the parenting and it's rooted in the behaviors of the parents. Of the so it's all rooted in marriage. 
Then, of course, the, the other subsystem is what we call other. Mm. That's where we have workers, we have relatives, mm. we have everyone. Now, that as well, gets, it gets affected if the marriage, if the spousal subsystem is not, not working. working. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you asked, what is marriage? That's that union. Very crucial, very foundational to the institutional family. Mm. Very important. And so if it is not done well, then the entire system. The entire system can be Because a, a foundation is everything. Mm -hmm. We sit in this house and talk because the foundation is good. It's not because the walls are decorated. Mm -hmm. It's because the foundation is good. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. You asked. What, what is what it and have what have we made it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we are getting into. Yeah, yeah. What we have made it, um, of course we still have a sense of what it should be, mm -hmm. but there is so much that has happened, and so it has become so, so superficial. Mm. It has become so temporal. It has become discardable. Mm. Right? It is this thing that someone doesn't consider is so foundational. Now, if you destroy the foundations, then scripture talks about it as mm -hmm. well. If mm -hmm. foundations are destroyed, what mm. can even the righteous do? do. Mm. So when we say, oh, family, oh, society is, is, is destroyed, we are talking about the foundations being destroyed. Mm. You've heard that family is the bedrock of society, right? And I would dare say, Marriage is the bedrock of, of, of family. Of family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's yes. so much we can develop from a good marriage. So if that marriage, um, marriage teaches us unconditional love, it teaches us unconditional forgiveness, it shapes our character, it promotes accountability, we are able to develop discipline and all manner of things that shape us as, as human beings. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Because it comes with that, it's a, a unique relationship that helps us, that pushes us to be better. Mm -hmm. But because human nature loves comfort, mm -hmm. so when it pushes us to be better, we, we abandon, we abandon it. it. Yeah. Hey, you're harassing me. Hey. Mm -hmm. And because we don't want to be this, it requires high level discipline, mm -hmm. high level mm -hmm. discipline, humility, so many things that mm -hmm. have to happen. So that's, that's marriage. Yeah. But what have we done? We are saying, oh, you know, it's now feeling best. If I don't feel you, if I don't feel love, <laughs> you know, those, those kinds of things. So that's where we, we've gone. But this is crucial. It holds us together. Yeah. You see? Yeah. It, it anchors us. Mm. It anchors us. And, and when we are still young, we don't even understand it. But as we grow, we realize that actually we age mm. into relationships and especially core relationships. Mm -hmm. That's why there's unbelievable amount of loneliness later on. Loneliness mm. is killing people more than anything else yeah. because they have no fulfilling mm -hmm. relationships. Either they've messed them up when they are still young or they've discarded them. So either you're, you're together but you don't feel each other. Mm. You're, you're disconnected and good relationships. You can be married 27 years 30, Not 50 years, golden yeah. jubilee, but you're horribly disconnected. Yeah. You see, you're strangers. And so that's how we have made marriage. Mm. I hope I've answered you your question. You have, you really have. Mm. And, and what a tragic thing that is to get to year 50 and there's little to no connection. Yeah. I think, I think that's tragic. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's yeah. tragic. Yeah. It's tragic. I, 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 let me share this statistic again. You've seen our statistics, the quality of marriages in this country. Mm. And we may mm. not be as, as, as um, divorced as, as these countries. We talk about US, 50% divorce rate. I don't know Europe, Luxembourg, 78%. Mm. Our divorce rate is 12%. That's dangerous as well. Mm -hmm. But listen. The quality of our marriages is so bad that 77% of the people married are miserable. Mm. They are unhappy. So they are not in the 12% divorcing, but they are in there in their marriages, but unhappy. They are unhappy. They hate. Oh. They are hanging in there. Oh, wow. That's tragic. Yeah. Because yeah. if your marriage is bad, it causes both mental and physical health challenges. 
You see, there's so much depression. What an irony mm -hmm. that would be depressed and miserable to that extent. Mm -hmm. There's so much loneliness. You would rather be lonely, Alone. single, yes. than be lonely in marriage. in marriage. There's no connection. People don't have their partners as friends. You remember the conversation that about we had, friends? Yes. <laughs> and then people are saying, what do you mean? But you know, people married, they are disconnected. Yes. You know, I attended a wedding recently where the MC was saying marriage is the only place where you're married to your enemy. And I'm like, that's also that's probably true. Yeah, <laughs> it's a problematic statement, but it is true. But it's true, <laughs> yes. you know, mm. to be married to an enemy. Mm. What does that mean? So there is, it's, it's tragic. And I'm hoping that these conversations we are having could help people to improve a little bit. Because we take marriage to be casual. Mm. And I, I will tell you what. If our core relationship, if, we, if, we, if you and I married people, if your marriage is bad, it's a risk. It's a health risk. Mm. It's a horrible risk because then you're exposed to stress every day. And that's not healthy. Mm. Speaking as a mental health practitioner, that's not healthy. Mm. Because you're, you're every day, it's like being exposed to... to, to um, I'm, I'm avoiding this word, like an unhealthy place, like yeah. living near a garbage bin. And, mm. and that's dangerous for health, mm -hmm. you see? That's a health predisposition. It's a predisposition to, um, to disease. To disease. Yeah. So just imagine every day you wake up and you're with this person and you hate each other and you look at them, you don't trust them, you, you're angry, you're insecure. You, that's not healthy. It's not. It's not healthy. It's not. Yeah. Um, do you think that our view of marriage, that you know, it being temporal, discardable, feelings-based, is a reflection of the reason that we get the reasons that we get into marriage? So I want us to get into the wrong reasons people mm -hmm. get married. Um, could you shed some light on that? And is that a reflection of? how then we are seeing marriage nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's casual, it's, oh, I can get in and out when I want to. I have mm -hmm. choices, I have options. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you think are the wrong reasons people are choosing to be married? Yeah, so responding to your question of, uh, um, is it a reflection of the foundations? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you yes, because um, we're going to get into details of, of foundations, of reasons why people get married. But I'll tell you, foundation is everything. Yeah. Um, it, the reason that got you married to this person is going to sustain you through. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll, I, I, I can tell you also, um, to be fair, that a person can marry for the right reasons, but they get frustrated. Yeah. Um, you've had, um, well, again, it gets back to, to that. Um, but there, there are people who get married for the right reasons. They want to start a family. They genuinely really are interested in uh, starting a family, growing mm -hmm. into this family. But they can be frustrated by the other partner. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and some of the things, they probably didn't see them coming. Or the partner along the way changes and becomes something else. Mm -hmm. So there is that bit of it. But to a bigger extent, especially these days, I'll tell you that um, the reasons people get married probably determine. I'm not putting a percentage mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm a, a student of statistics, so mm -hmm. and I know how we can abuse statistics sometimes. Yeah. But to a bigger extent, it it's rooted in the reasons we got married. Mm. So then, what are these reasons? Why? What? What are the reasons we are calling wrong? Because again, I want for people who are watching, there might be some who are engaged right now That's who right. are considering saying yes to someone or considering asking someone, for them to evaluate, am I marrying this person for the right for the reasons. right reasons? Yes. So what are the wrong reasons? The wrong reasons. I'm very sure we're going to talk about the mm. right reasons. Yes. But the wrong reasons. Number one, mm -hmm. pressure. Mm. Peer pressure. Mm -hmm. So you attend somebody's wedding and you go like, oh my God, I can't wait. Time is running out. Time running out yes. and all that. And um, just trying to fit in. Yeah. Just because all your peers are wedding. That's a wrong reason. And, uh, and I want to tell you, peer pressure is real. Mm -hmm. I, I've told people that peer pressure is not just a concept for teenagers. No, we all are. We get pressured by our peers. Um, and so um, I, uh, I'll tell you that people get married because their peers are getting married. married. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they, when you're pushed by pressure, 
when you're anxious, so you're, you're anxiety driven. Mm -hmm. So I can't, oh my God, I'm the only one left behind. That's a wrong reason because you're likely to just bump into someone, push things, compromise a number of things, mm -hmm. not do, not do uh, due, due diligence, diligence and just, you know, run. That's a wrong reason, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I always tell people, please keep your land. Mm. Keep your land, take your time, understand. Mm. So we're going to talk about that. The second reason is societal pressure. Mm. <laughs> aunties, right? aunties and uncles. Aunties and uncles. <laughs> and uh, by saying this, um, I'm, I'm speaking as a parent. Mm. I know as parents, we get to a point, we all want our children to really start family and, and do all that. But sometimes the pressure is too mm. much too much. Mm -hmm. And so we marry because of daddy, mm -hmm. because of mommy, because auntie, because they are asking me, because they, again, we compromise mm -hmm. so many things and we are not able to consider the person, I'm, you know, they, sometimes they even choose someone for you. Mm. Why don't you take yes. Rachel's son? Yes. <laughs> And yes, you're thinking right. to get them off my back, uh -huh. let me... You see? Yeah. So that pressure, that pressure is also a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a very wrong reason for mm -hmm. anyone to get married because you're not making decisions for you. No. You're making them for another person. And if there is anything I want to say and emphasize, check who are you marrying for? Mm. Is it you? or another person? That's just a simple question. Simple question yeah. But very helpful in terms of checking our reasons why we are getting married. Mm -hmm. And when we go through them, you're going to see. Third one, mm -hmm. popularity, celebrities. Oh, oh yes, this yes. person is known. Yes, yes. Known for who? To who? Mm -hmm. And they'll be known to everyone else and not to you. That's, That's a wrong reason. Yeah. So we want to connect with so and so because <laughs> these persons. Yes. This this actually is is so big, and I think I could relate. I could also add the the good family. You've had the good mm. family mentality. Mm -hmm. I'm marrying in that family. Mm. <laughs> I'm marrying in that okay. family. Yes. Oh, that family. Yes. But you see. There is something important about the family you're marrying into. But be careful mm -hmm. what you're considering. Yes. Right? They could be minister, they could yeah. be MP, they could but what is what is it about this family that you're marrying? Yes. For. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So just because um, I don't know, but and I, I always tell people, if it is family, just be careful that you're considering values. Yes. Right? Not just popularity, mm. not, not outward appearances, not, um, you know, known way, yeah. That shouldn't be the reason. The reason is the person. And I always tell people, you're not marrying family, you're marrying A the person. person. You can actually grow weary. You can actually die of depression in that whole family that is looking so healthy and all outward laughter. Mm. But in that family, you're depressed if you didn't consider the person you married. So it's very important. Family is important, but be careful that you're considering the, the family the values. values. Yes, yes. Right? If you say that's a Christian family, I've seen this, I've seen that, the parents are together, they're all that. There's a number of things you're going to consider. Mm -hmm. That is important. But don't just marry family because it's popular. Mm. <laughs> no. No, that's, that's, that's a, a very, reason. very, very wrong reason. Wealth and finances. Ah, this person has money. This person has money. Yeah. yeah. They are loaded. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You see? Yeah. Wealth and finances. I've said, and I'm going to repeat it again here, Rachel. Don't fall for moving parts. Mm. Anyone can earn money. Mm. Anyone can be wealthy. So for you to tag yourself onto finances, that can be earned by anyone. Even yeah. you yourself mm. can earn money. Mm -hmm. And so for you to leave everything else, and then you fall for, this person has, has money. money. This, these are seasonal things, these are moving parts, 
This is something that any of us can get. That's true. So that is a wrong reason. Mm -hmm. And can I just take it back to what you asked me earlier? Mm. And, and you said, could this be a reflection of, um, the, you know, the discardable nature of marriages? The, could this be linked to the... If someone marries for money, mm -hmm. this can go. Yes, the money can go. The money can go. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, even before the money goes, you're going to get into this marriage and you're going to realize that actually what you need is not the money. Money can be, I know so many marriages, mm -hmm. so much money. And yet? Looking, big houses, mm -hmm. beautiful, clean Pies, clothes, yes. hurting, dying people. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So when you get into marriage and you realize the emptiness, the confusion, the harassment, the, all that, the behavior, the character that we should connect with in marriage mm. is not there. And the money is there. Do you know how much emptiness the world is experiencing? Yeah. And made this plenty. Do you know how much misery people are experiencing? Amid this plenty, mm. you have no idea. So what happens is that even before the money goes, the money is there but you realize material. Mm. Now, I have to remind viewers that uh, our lives, 90%, thrive on relationship. Mm. Relational, what we call relational health. So if you go tag yourself onto someone because they have money, that's okay. We all need body comfort. We want to live in a good place. <laughs> but be careful that this is not going to um, replenish you. Yeah. This is not going to fulfill you every single day. Mm -hmm. What we need is relationship. We need, actually, what we need in life, 90% uh, is, is cost free. Mm. Yeah, we need love, mm. we need appreciation, acceptance. we need acceptance, we mm. need, uh, you know, that sense of meaning, security. we need security, we need, all those things are cost free. Yeah, and, and I hope when I say this, <laughs> my brothers who are out there will understand, because I've been doing uh, mental health sessions during the month of June, Yeah, and everywhere I've gone, and I'm talking about mental relational health, and I've gotten everywhere I've gone, I've got a comment. Men say, just give me money and I'll be good to go. Really? Yes. Now, when you're young, it's going to feel like money. Mm, yes. But I want to tell you, as we grow, you're going to realize that you need more relational health mm -hmm. than, money. than money. Material is only 10% of our lives. And we never get enough because we never have contentment. That's true. You see? Yeah. So every time you buy a car, you need a better one. You buy another, you need a better one. You, know, you have a house, you have a dream house. You, mm. So we never have enough of that. But when you get into a relationship and all you're flagging mm. as a partner is money, or the person is just tagged onto your money, mm -hmm. that's bound to be absolutely disastrous. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say one more thing? Mm -hmm. I think there are many reasons, but let there me say one reasons, more thing. Yes. But one more thing is looks, outward appearance. Oh my, okay, uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> outward appearance, um, I know this is going to be controversial, but let me say this, we all need to be attracted to someone, yeah. and we need, I mean, good looking, but what is good looking? Mm. As you have always heard, that beauty does what? It's in the eyes of it's the beholder. It's in the eyes of the beholder. Mm. I want to tell you that every person on planet Earth it's is beautiful. beautiful in their own way. Right? Now this beauty, your definition of beauty might be different from my definition of beauty. And it's okay mm -hmm. for all of us to look for someone we feel is beautiful oh, in our yes. eyes. Mm -hmm. However, if you pursue outward appearance, mm. outward appearance, it's going to be disastrous. Mm. Can I remind viewers that what we see on a person is actually like 5%. Yeah. Because we are all, um, we are all 90% invisible. For instance, I know you have lungs, mm. you have uh, kidneys, kidneys, we yeah. don't see. Now, body, all the body parts we see, the body parts we don't see, plus your five senses, and if you are a woman, six senses plus situation, <laughs> yes. they all make up only 10% of you. The rest of the person is invisible. Mm. Their thoughts, their belief system, their memories, emotions. Their, their emotions, yes. their willpower, their, their um, 
their mindset, yes, um, their sense of, of meaning and purpose, the core of them, we don't see. Yeah. Now, if you don't pay attention to character and you go after body, it's mm. going to be disastrous, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I tell people, don't marry calves. Don't just marry a dude. Don't mm. just, please check the person that you're dealing. Check the inner, check mm. their attitudes. Check their belief system. Mm. That's why I've always said, please don't marry a stranger. Mm. You see them? So people meet someone just one day and boom, they're their wife and boom, mm. they're their husband. Mm. Now, they don't pair that they look good. But, but that can't be the reason for you to marry yeah. someone. Yeah. This is a long-term relationship with destinies involved and mm -hmm. so much to manage and you have not paid attention to how this person behaves and you go after their body, after mm. their looks, that's dangerous. Really so that's a, that's a very, very dangerous mm. uh, place to be. Yeah, there are some other reasons, especially under pressure. Under pressure, yes. Mm. Um, so for instance, if someone gets pregnant. pregnant. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, um, again, I've, I've met people who married because they got pregnant. Now, this is not something to say in a casual way because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a dilemma. Mm -hmm. but, but also check, check, mm -hmm. because either um, if you do that under pressure, mm -hmm. if you marry someone because you've gotten pregnant and uh, you were already seeing that this mm -hmm. person might not be the right person, but then you have just gotten pregnant and... and um, either intentional or accidentally, and then you make a decision to marry them because uh, what do you do? Mm. That can also be dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are challenges when someone has already gotten pregnant, mm. but check, yeah. check whether you want to subject your life to, to this person, um, their behaviors, um, just because you got pregnant. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Of course, um, lastly, maybe for now, yeah. uh, one of the other reasons I've seen is uh, people get trapped because of the length of the relationship. Mm. So if they have dated for long or they, yeah. um, they say, what will people we'll say? Start again, yes. Start again. Mm. People have seen us together. Now, if I really don't marry this person, what will people say? Mm. Can I repeat this and say, be careful who you're marrying for. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Be careful why you're getting married. Mm. If it is for Rachel, <laughs> mm. honestly, after the wedding, they don't care. They go to their homes. They go to their homes. Mm. You're going to have to manage this relationship yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So if you ask me, I would like to ask this question again. Who are you marrying Marry for? for? Is it yeah. for people or for, or for you? you? Very important. Yeah. yeah. Very, very important. Um, I was just saying earlier how I'm really enjoying this conversation. You talked about how we are 90% invisible. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny you say that because in a marriage or in any relationship, we interact with the invisible mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. Your, the way somebody thinks, the way they process you know, things, which is why we have things like conflict resolution, we have things like understanding personalities, knowing an individual and how they, they think, how they process the world, mm -hmm. their idea of, of life, their upbringing, all of that is what we interact with and not the physical, beautiful or handsome person. And so many times you find people saying, okay, I'm going to marry this person, they look really nice, and people are telling you, oh, you look nice together. You guys go well together, you're going to have beautiful children. And yet that's not what makes a marriage or a relationship. Um, I think at this point it would be good to know what then are the right reasons to consider um, before saying yes to someone or before pursuing someone for, for marriage. Yeah. Starting point should be... <laughs> should be how do these people connect with your values? Okay. You see, mm -hmm. we marry at values level. Mm. You've heard that like attracts like. Yep. So, and we never see this because relational science is very interesting. Mm. So we are likely to connect with people that 
look like us. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me just break it down for us. Mm -hmm. Values, mm -hmm. our belief system. When we say a personal value system, what is your personal value system? Your personal value system is your standard of right and wrong. Got it. Remember that marriage is a management platform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we can start it at emotional level, but it's going to be management, management, whether we want it or not. So the thing is, how does this person fit within your standard of right and wrong? Mm. And you've heard scripture, I think, scripture in Amos 3.3. Uh, 3. It says two cannot walk together unless, unless they, they agree. agree. Mm. So how do we agree? It's at values level. So if your value, your standard of right and wrong, your standard is, for instance, I've heard Christians say, is it really necessary to marry a Christian? Mm. And they say, okay, check. Mm -hmm. So if you marry someone, because that's your belief system. So if someone doesn't fit in your belief system, how are you going to make decisions? How are you going to connect together? How are you going to, like, what is going to happen? What conversations are you going to have? So we need to see someone who fits within our value system mm. very key that's where it begins that's yeah. why i was saying don't just go body mm. see what someone believes mm -hmm. you marry a man who does not believe in women or whatever they say ah women are to be beaten or mistreated and then you say man they look good mm. they are a dude mm -hmm. don't go for that mm. you see what 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 does someone they don't believe in, for instance, um, um, again, I keep using examples. For, <laughs> they don't believe in a woman working. Mm. You want to grow in career. And then you say they come from a good family. Mm. They're handsome. <laughs> they they handsome. have money. They have money. <laughs> like, we'll what sort this mean? thing out. And yet that is what's fundamental. You see? Yeah. You connect with a woman. Let me be fair to men. Yeah. You connect with a woman, and all they believe is that their money is their money. Yeah. And you're going to see this. That's why I, I, I encourage people. By the way, relational science encourages that when you're going to marry, at least give it mm. at least two years of Just interruption. Gauge, yes. At least. Mm. I know people marry in a short time. Um, we connect with people and we are able to figure things out. Mm -hmm. But in that period, and I've heard people ask me, is there a period, a period for of dating? Time, yes. But you see, that interaction before you commit is important because you're going to check out a few things. Mm -hmm. You're going to go out on dates. You're going to see how this person treats people. How, in a restaurant, how your partner responds to, to uh, what are they called? Waiters, Waiters and waitresses. If you're wise and discerning, you're going to see a few things. Because someone who yells, who is so impatient, who just... That's, that's, a, that's telling. Mm. And so these are some of the things you need to look at. If you, if you value your parents so much, and this person is controlling you from day one, and mm -hmm. is saying, why are you talking to your mom? Why are you talking to your dad? Why are you... That is something that you need to consider. So that's why we encourage, please interact. Interact mm. not with a view of running away, but with a view to understanding whether your values, your values are connect. aligned. Mm. They are aligned. That is extremely important. important. Number two, mm. right reasons. Number two, readiness. Mm. Are you ready mm -hmm. for marriage? And, uh, and I'll tell you, Rachel, there are people who just marry. And mm. we've already talked about it. Mm. It's either peer pressure or societal pressure, or I have money now, mm, or I'm ready. I'm ready. Mm. But readiness is about commitment to this huge institution called marriage. And, and unfortunately, we take it casual. We think, uh, I can, who can't marry? Do I need to go to school? You see, this is a big institution, and you've heard me say that uh, Every level requires a different us. There is a lot of transformation each one of us needs to make. I remember when I was going, when I had just gotten married, not when I was going to get married, when I had just gotten married, I still remember. Yeah. The first week, um, 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 we came back from honeymoon. honeymoon. Don't ask where we went. <laughs> but um, it was in Sarongo. <laughs> You'll ask Sarongo. Uh, but but uh, when we came back, and then people were coming, 
And then it dawned on me, oh, now I'm, I'm in my own in home. This. Yes. Wait a minute. <laughs> so to, now I have to take, I have care, to take care of this. Yeah. I had lived, I stayed with my sister. Mm -hmm. I had been used to a big person in my mm. life who is making decisions. Mm. Now I realize, hey, I'm going to be making decisions. Mm -hmm. hey, wait a minute. Now, the thing is, that readiness is about your ability to, to, manage, rise, to, the to rise to the occasion yes. and yes. manage this big institution. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That is important. Now, can I tell you how many children we have in marriage? Mm -hmm. Ay, <laughs> That's why I love scripture in, in 1 Corinthians 13, mm. I think it's verse 11, mm -hmm. which says, when I was a child, I acted like a child, I, acted like a child. I thought like a child, mm -hmm. I reasoned like a child, I, 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 I spoke like mm. a child. But when I became a man, mm. I put away all the childish, childish behavior, behavior and I rose mm. to the occasion. Let me tell you. Readiness for marriage is a big thing for mm -hmm. both men and women. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Because you're going to be a manager. Mm -hmm. You're going to, to have to hold conversations. You're going to make decisions. You're going to solve problems. You're going to be in charge of generations. You're setting a foundation for your generations. Now um, it's no longer um, I come from the WSG family. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it's no longer, uh, I'm no longer going to have my children introduce themselves as WSG. No. They are going to be their twinners. Now, can you think about the generation of their twinners? I'm going to be a mother of generations. I'm going to be a father of generations. I'm in the foundations of people. It's that huge. It's big. It's not something to joke about. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So readiness is important. Is important. It is important. Mm -hmm. Even if I said those two yes. values, and readiness. And readiness. Yes. But let me say number three. Mm -hmm. Number three, do I understand the person I'm going to get married to? Mm. At least to a degree. At least to a degree. Mm. You can't know everything, mm -hmm. but there are certain basics. And I'll tell you, as a marriage therapist, I've met people like, who are clueless mm. about the person they are going to marry. Whenever I'm doing premarital counseling, uh, one of the questions I love to ask people is, uh, I, uh, first of all, I ask them, what is great about your partner? They're like, choo, 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 choo. oh, he's nice. <laughs> the list is long. <laughs> Can I have another paper? Oh, okay. But when I ask what are the struggles and negatives mm. about your partner, you see them go like, mm. Mm. well. I don't know, I can't think of any. I can't think of any. <laughs> They're nice. And in the beginning stages of, of dating, yes, that is, that is usually the standpoint. Now, that's not healthy. No. You're going to see. Yeah. And it is okay. Not with the view to running away. I want to tell you, when we were dating, there are certain things I saw about my partner. Mm -hmm. And they were real. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain things he's not able to do for whatever reason. Mm. And... And of course, I've been able to discover why, mm -hmm. and, and I'm gracious. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, how will you support your partner if you think if you they're just already perfect. made? Now, the yes. reason why, why we are having uh, marriage breakups now, people go like, no, I didn't sign up for this. Oh, I didn't sign up for this. But you see, you did sign up for it because you didn't know it. Mm. You That's see? True. You didn't know. Mm -hmm. You didn't see it. You didn't take the time. Mm. You didn't know their family background. They are angry. You have no idea where they got this anger from. Mm. So it's very important that we take time and understand. Because marriage is ministry. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to support your partner mm. if you think they are already met? We don't have already made partners. No. no. We are all work in progress. That's true. Yeah. Mm. So it's very important that I've given you three. I could They're say powerful. more. Yeah. But they are so... Yeah powerful mm -hmm. and so key and so foundational mm. to all of us yeah. getting married. That's so true. You talked mm. about values and I remembered um, a video that was circulating on social media. A guy said how he went on a date with a woman and the woman asked him, you know, do you believe in God? Mm -hmm. So the guy is like, what kind of a question is that? Mm -hmm. Of course I believe in mm -hmm. God. And so he re reiterated the question to her. He says, how about you? Do you believe in God? 
And she says, no, mm. I don't know. I don't think so. Mm. And he says, he was so taken aback, he had never thought to put God-fearing on his criteria of, you know, a partner. But that day his eyes were open. And I think mm. there are certain values which we think are obvious, yeah. which we think, ah, oh, this is common sense. It's commonplace. And yet it might not be. You may not even think to look for it until you cross over and get married. And then you start finding problems, which is why we say things like, I didn't sign up. I this. didn't sign up. Mm. For instance, but, but do you know, Rachel, one of the challenges is that we see marriage as ending with us. Mm. First of all, ending with us is still dangerous. That's true. Because if, if you have different values, mm -hmm. if you can't agree, mm -hmm. if you can't make decisions, if you have different interests, if you have totally different, how are you going to work together? How are you going to live together? Mm. And then we say, until death. Really? Like until death? Are with this sure? stranger? Yes. <laughs> but leave alone that. We don't project our relationships, to see the implications they are going to have mm. on, on, on life beyond us, like our children, right? For instance, if you say um, um, religion or, or spirituality doesn't matter, mm. how are you going to raise children? What is going to happen, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and now you have seen, for instance, partners stranded, they are going to church, they are trying to... They are go trying to take their children to this church. Mm. The person who um, is not a practicing um, spiritual person, they, it's a problem. Mm. Yeah, I, I've, 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 I've met, um, for instance, cases where the different religions and uh, people always ask me, does religion matter? matter. Mm. I believe we will yes. talk about it at some point. And I say everything in marriage matters. Mm. But uh, I've seen cases where this one is this um, religious religion. Um, orientation, another one is here, but now they have children. Mm -hmm. Where are the children going to go? And if you can't agree, where are the children? So they get confused, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. Then there may be one of the partners takes them this direction, another one is rioting. Mm -hmm. So it is very important that we check and have conversation. And I think we've had this conversation before, Rachel, mm -hmm. that it's important to have conversation on everything. Yeah. Don't get married to someone when you're holding back and you're like, mm -hmm. mm, I hope I this hope. doesn't break our, our uh, he, he will be uncomfortable, she will yeah. be uncomfortable. No. Talk about Talk it. About Talk it. about it mm. and say, what are we going to do with this? When we say that, mm. we are setting ourselves up for a good relationship, a mm. relationship where we're going to solve problems, um, you know, discuss issues, resolve, and move. That's mm. what marriage is about. It really is. Yeah, it's it not really about is. sleeping together. No, <laughs> not at all. Mm. So I, I mean, I, I don't know what else to add. Mm -hmm. um, I think I don't, I don't want to add my voice to what you have said, but just for our viewers to consider uh, values, your values must be aligned, readiness for marriage. I think that's really, really important mm -hmm. for somebody. Do you, do you see a, a readiness in your partner mm -hmm. or your fiance or girlfriend mm -hmm. or boyfriend mm -hmm. to rise to the occasion without mm -hmm. complaining? And grumbling. And I think these are things you can see as you're dating. Mm. Some people pretend like either they bury their heads in the sand and mm. they're like, oh, I didn't see this, I didn't see this red flag. But I think if you pay keen attention, because they say I love is love blind. Me. Love is blind. <laughs> and then they tell people if your love is, bl is uh, blind, uh, you're going to wake up to, it's going to be a rude awakening. I tell you. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. very rude. Mm. And that's why we say, I didn't sign up for this, mm. I didn't see this coming. How, mm. you know, yeah, I did. It's very important that mm. we not um, uh, hyper alert, mm. <laughs> but we, uh, we, we, we know that we are starting a partnership that mm. is taking us somewhere. Yeah. I can never overemphasize the importance of looking at marriage as a partnership. Absolutely. You Absolutely. have to look at it as a partnership, mm. as teamwork. Otherwise, uh, where are you headed mm. to? Mm. It's taking us nowhere. Nowhere. Mm. Thank you so much, Dr. Evers. I, I watched another video. Someone, a friend of mine shared a, a quick video recently, and the couple was saying how, I think right now, it goes back to one of the reasons, wrong reasons people are getting married, that people see marriage as something to tick off a bucket list. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've gone to school, I've made some money. You know, I guess the next logical thing would be get married mm. and not as 
I am marrying this person because I, I feel called to, to be mm. married to this person. I'm going to serve them. I'm going to cater to their needs. We're going to grow together. Grow together, yeah. you know, as opposed to what can I get from this person or what can I get from this family since, you know, family is a reason. That's the thing. Actually, Rachel, you just remind me of something mm. that is also coming up. It is economics, mm. uh, where people have to share costs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So they say um, rent is becoming too much. Mm, let's just, let's just uh, be, together be together and share costs and then marry. That's dangerous. Mm. That's really dangerous. Mm -hmm. Remember foundation. It's important. Remember foundation. If the foundation is faulty, mm -hmm. it is going to be faulty everywhere. I had a story of, a, 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 was it a tallest building in one of these countries, I guess Japan or wherever, mm -hmm. and um, um, it had uh, how many stories, 41? No, many stories, mm -hmm. but on floor 41, a crack was developed. And so, wow. yeah, so the um, engineers uh, tried to trace this, where is it coming from? And the crack was becoming more, Big, becoming yeah. more and bigger and bigger and it was worrying and they couldn't understand what to do. Mm -hmm. Later on, they found out that actually the problem was rooted in the foundations. And what did they do? They had to bring down the building. What? 41 stories? More. Now you have to understand that if your foundations are faulty mm. in relational building, then most likely we're going to have faults up there mm -hmm. and the fault line just okay. goes. Widening. 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 And if we do not reinforce mm -hmm. the foundations, it can be so terrible. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that's where we should end because when we end here, people are going to say, ah, so what are we going to do? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, I want to, to, again, speaking as a relationship coach, we, can, we are all in the business of learning and yeah. learning, self improving, self-improvement, self -improvement, mm. and it is okay. But it's dangerous when we get blind to the things that we are supposed to deal with. Once we embrace the challenges we have seen, we all can mm. be better. Mm. But if someone is not willing to learn, mm. not willing to be better, mm. it can be a problem. That's true. Secondly, we all can marry for different reasons and we all can struggle. There's no perfect marriage. Mm -hmm. However, two things we need to understand. Number one, that there is a place for learning and improvement. Mm -hmm. But number two, number two, that it's going to be harder when you have ignored things you should have seen. Mm. Yeah? And, and then they pop up later. Mm -hmm. So you have to do a mental readjustment and be able to say, well, I didn't see this coming, but it's going to cost more. Mm -hmm. I need to put in more effort, but it can work. But it's going to take longer. A long, yeah, a longer time. A longer time. So on a, con on a concluding note, what I hear you saying is if somebody found themselves in a marriage where they married for the wrong reasons, it is possible to rectify the foundation. 100%. You, you deconstruct while the marriage is still going, but it's going to take longer for you. And it's going to require more energy. More energy and more effort. But is it achieved? Is it possible? Absolutely. Yes, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Evers. Thank you for joining us um, in this episode of Reality Check. I've learned so much, even though I've been married. <laughs> A few years, mm -hmm. <laughs> not like Dr. Ivers, um, but for the people who I work with, you know, people who are younger than me who say they are thinking about getting married, you've had it here. Please ask yourself, who am I marrying for? And am, am I marrying for the right reason? Check for values alignment, check for readiness of marriage. Those are the most important things, mm -hmm. or at least foundationally, before you say I do to another human being. Until next time, we'll be back with another conversation. For now, we would appreciate your feedback. Let us know in our comment section what you have enjoyed about this episode, uh, what has stood out for you, and we, will, um, we look forward to hearing your comments and to reading your comments. My name is Rachel, Dr. Evers. From us to you, it is bye-bye. Stay well, stay healthy, and keep it reality check.